Captain Yonah. Lifeboat off the port side. Thundercut. What do you make of it? They must have been shipwrecked. It's strange. The sea has been calm for more than a month. Why, that man is an officer in the guards of the Raja of Sarawak. Here I go. Here I go. Bring the men aboard. Look alive. It was like a terrible nightmare. They made a landing at night. First, they massacred the garrison at the port. And then they attacked the palace of the Raja. How many were there? At least a hundred. They were all English. We held out against them. As long as it was possible. But they were using modern weapons. A machine gun that cut us down as if we were so many blades of grass. And then what? Where is Raja Hassim? They're holding him prisoner. And the others? And the Raja's wife, the Maharani. The dead body of the Maharani was found later. And what of the princess? She was killed too, I think. That night, the palace was an inferno of raging flames and terror. Listen to me, Sander Khan. The leader of those adventurers is named John Burke. Drive him back into the sea. The people of Sarawak are waiting. They have faith in you. Go to their aid. What did he say his name is? Burke. Uh-huh. I think that soon this Burke will regret the day he took it into his head to land in Sarawak. Reverse course. We're sailing for Sarawak. I'm all right. You better try to catch the man who threw that bomb. We'll catch him, Lieutenant. Words will accomplish nothing. That Sandokan is tightening the circle. If we don't break through it immediately... We'll double the number of yes, sentinels. Yes, and then you have to have other sentinels to keep watch on the sentinels all the way to infinity. No, Lieutenant. It's not this system that will bring about the solution of our problem. Another bomb exploded, and not ten feet away from me. In a month, the English Investigating Commission will be here. Do you know what it will mean if they find that we're still fighting the guerrillas? You don't know? Well, I'll tell you. It will mean that the English government will no longer recognize my sovereignty here. Some water. It will be better to anticipate the commission. I myself will write to the Viceroy in Bombay to tell him that a rabble band of pirates. I wouldn't do it, Lord Burke. In Bombay, they know quite well that the piracy of Sandal Khan is nothing more nor less than the manifestation of his Malayan nationalism. Well, then? Hassim is now safely in our hands. If he abdicates in our favor, then England will no longer have any right or excuse to stick her nose into this affair. At times, I have doubts as to your intelligence. There's no earthly reason why Hassim should make me such a present. There are any number of ways of convincing a prisoner that it's in his interest to make presents. Ah. The only thing that Hassim would willingly present us with would be his death. And I don't want him to become a mess. <laughs> don't you have a better solution than that? 
If you'll permit me, Lord Birch, I'd like to make a suggestion. You see, I've given the matter considerable thought. In my opinion, the first thing that should be done is to capture this most mysterious Sandokan and hang him at once. But to do this, we will need a great many more men and additional weapons. In India, you'll find it still possible to procure trained mercenaries and modern machine guns. Do you think you'll have these as a present, too? The veins of ore along the Canton River produce large quantities of gold. Without counting the treasure which is so well guarded in the strong rooms beneath the palace. Please continue. The young India is about to weigh anchor. It's a merchant ship that will be sailing under the Dutch flag. I'm here with you. Come, let's go. I must take the lady straight to her cabin. My mistress is not well. Hurry there. Move along. Come aboard quickly. What do you want here? Is the captain aboard ship? He's below resting. But these soldiers are not allowed to come aboard. Stand aside there. Move. Forward there. Get below deck. Get below deck, I say. These lizard's tails cooked in wine are a specialty you will not find in any other tavern in Sarawak. What garbage? Eat it. The Chinese are sensitive. Oh, it's very imprudent for you to be seen here. I couldn't get to you any other way to warn you. What has happened? Burke has requisitioned the young India. They're loading cases of gold on her, which they plan to exchange in Bombay for mercenaries and more weapons. They want to eliminate us before the English Investigating Commission arrives. The ship must be stopped. I'll have to find a way to get on board. Here's an embarkation tag. It belongs to a sailor who's a friend of ours. If Yanis is complaining about being kept idle, there'll be plenty for him to do. This news will be exactly what he wants to hear. Go to Yanis and tell him to set sail immediately. Our appointment will be at the Shoal of Vase. I'll signal with a lantern. But how will you do it? The ship is well armed, you know. Don't worry about it, Homat. And Tremel Knight? He should already be here. Yesterday, a Dayak handed me this message. 
I have seen the rock where the falcon takes wing. Tomorrow night in the tavern of Ho Chen. Tell me what it means. For three weeks now, Tremel Nike has been beating the jungle to discover where Burke has hidden Hassim. Do you think he's found him? I'm certain of it. If he didn't specify where he is, it may be because he was afraid that Dayak would be captured. If this is true, we'll make an immediate attempt to liberate our Raja. First, the ship. If she comes back with those arms, this time it'll be all over for us. Don't anyone move! Hey, I have a feeling that I know you. Let me take a look at you. Where have I seen that face of yours? Huh? Don't move! you did that on purpose. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. You're lying, but now I'll give you a lesson you won't forget. What's going on here? This imbecile dared to splash filthy water on my uniform. Remember, I am a soldier of Lord Burke. And I am a mariner of the Queen of Holland. Keep in mind that as long as you remain on this ship, you are guests. And unwelcome ones of that. Therefore, you respect the discipline on board. Did you embark at Sarawak? Yes, Captain, it's Sarawak. Get back to work. In that boy. case, I admire even more your loyalty to the flag of Holland. Those soldiers made their way on board by the use of force. And by using force, they could throw us overboard. I see. It would be better to avoid unpleasantness. You'll be on duty in the cabins. Accept it as a promotion. Thank you. Mistress, calm yourself now, I beg you. It's only I, Kamamuri. There's no fire any longer. You're safe at last, and now we're going away. I'll go and get you a cup of hot tea. It will do you good. Come in. I've brought your breakfast, sir. Put it down there. What do we have to eat this morning? Porridge, sir. I know how to prepare it in the Burmese style. Very well, then. Let's try the Burmese porridge. You look more like a pirate than a cabin boy to me. The day you happen to meet a pirate, 
You'll realize the difference. You seem convinced that sooner or later I'll have this meeting. We're at sea, sir. Everything is possible. That will do. Give me my sword. Let me go. Let me go. What's going on? Leave my mistress alone, I tell you. What is it you want of us? Why have you come to annoy me in my cabin? Who are they? Please excuse me, Lieutenant. We came in because this cabin boy says that woman there... Yes, it's the truth. This woman is the daughter of Hassim. Be very careful of what you're saying. We happen to know that the Princess Hada is long dead. It's she. I know her very well. No, she is my mistress. The wife of the merchant Prince Kadim. I swear to you. Who are you? Speak up now. Answer me. Are you the daughter of Hassim? What's wrong with her? She seems demented. No, it's only that she's suffering from an illness and doesn't reason. I'm taking her to Bombay to have her treated. She's feigning. Don't believe him. It's harder. She's not the wife of the merchant Kadim. The boy is lying. That's enough from you. I tell you, that lady is my mistress. All this excitement is suspicious. Confine the two of them in their cabin. If what you have told me is true, you'll have much more than that. It's true, my lord. It's true. We'll speak about it again later. Now run along. And you too. I wish to be alone. change must have slipped off. This way the ship will be adrift as if we didn't have enough trouble. Stop the engine. Lower the anchor. Captain, the ship is in danger of running aground. The channel is very shallow here. There's nothing else to be done. Aye, aye, aye sir. Lower the anchor. Send someone with a bosun to repair the rudder. Tell them to get it done quickly. Send someone with a bosun right away to repair the rudder. Tell them to get it done quickly, understand? You may be sure it was not one of my men. This is a clear act of sabotage. I'll give you half an hour to get the ship on its course, after which you will wait along with the others until the necessary repairs are made. That is, however, unless you're too impatient and would like to act as a rudder yourself. Let us out of here. Open the door. Quiet in there. Silence. What is this? Would you be good enough to tell us what's going on? Nothing. Please, sir, try to keep calm. Now go back into your cabin. What's happened? Nothing. It's nothing serious. Open up. Open the door. You have to stay away. No one is permitted to speak to the prisoners. Do you think you are right?
rifle keep swimming. Stop it, Kamamori. What do you think you're doing? You! How is it that you are here? I can't explain now. Come with me, Prince. I'm going away. Don't you recognize me? I'm Sandokan. She can't recognize you. Her mind ceased to function during that terrible night. Come. Come quickly before they get here. Stay below deck. Come this way. One man to the prow. Another to the stern. Don't allow anyone on deck. Guard the hatches. In here. You too. No one will look for you here. No matter what you may hear, you mustn't move and keep quiet. We'll divide up now. Five of you come with me. Those shots. What has happened? Up there. Look, Lieutenant. Up on the bridge. Give yourselves up. The ship is surrounded. Arrest him at once. As you see, Lieutenant, you've had your meeting with the pirate. Why, it's Sandokan. But that's impossible. Capture that man. Stop. This cannon is aimed at you, and in another moment, the ship is going to be attacked. What is it you want? I'm not interested in the ship, Captain, but in what they loaded on board in Sarawak. Order your mariners to withdraw at once. Below decks, all of you. You withdraw that order. I'm in command here. I won't expose my men. Below decks. The rest of you, look like... Below decks, man.
right move. We've got to silence that cannon. Hirondo, give us covering fire. You recognize me? Yes, it's really you, Sandokan. Don't worry. Everything is all right. This gold could not arrive in Bombay. I understand. I would like you to accept a part of it in order to repay your company for the damage done to the ship and to the passengers. I thank you. Sambilion, begin transferring the gold onto the Praho. Go ahead. Very well, Tiger. Yanis, go below and bring the Princess Haida on deck. We'll embark immediately. I'll say goodbye, and I wish to express my admiration for you. Of Mercy, and if we continue like this, we'll be there in one day. Mm, if we continue like this, I'll have to give up smoking. Go First a midnight swim, place. then all that shooting, now it's the wind. Go along. Hirondo, go below yes, and make me a cup of tea. Right away. Kamamuri, how is the princess hot? Better, she's improving rapidly. Sandokan. I know what you're going through. All my family scattered or dead, my father taken prisoner. I understand, Hada. But I remember you as a young woman of great courage. It's hard to believe two years have passed. But these last few months have weighed upon me like a century. I thought of you that frightful night as I fled for my life through the flames of the burning palace. I hoped I would see you appear suddenly out of the darkness to come to our aid. To save the life of my mother as they were murdering her right before my eyes. And then... Oh, it was so horrible. Sandokan, what will become of my poor father, and of all my friends, and of the people of Sarawak? The fight is not over in Sarawak, nor will it be, as long as one man is still alive. But now I must look after you, and leave you in a safe place. No, don't leave me. I beg you, Sandokan. The only time I ever feel safe is when I'm near you. Anyway, where is there I can go now? All right. You'll come with me to Sarawak. Okay. 
And to your village. Have you seen any of Lord Burke's soldiers? The jungle is entirely free in the region of Kwat, as far as the pagoda. There, the loyal Homak keeps watch upon the road that leads to the region of Rune and Sarawak. Thank you, Kwan. Prepare to march. We're going to the pagoda. Virangu, you go ahead and mark the trail. Virundo, follow his rear guard. <laughs> Seems to me that Homer has chosen a safe place. Keep your weapons at the ready. The signal. Sandokan! Homer! Let's go. Sandokan, at last you're here. I didn't think I'd see you again. And the ship, were you able to stop it? It won't unload gold at Bombay. Only disarmed soldiers. Carry the weapons inside. Homot, do you recognize me? Your Highness, it's you. Buddha is great in his wisdom. We thought that you yes, were... Yes, I know. Tell me, my father, do you know anything? What is it? Perhaps he... He is alive, Your Highness. But there's only one man who can tell you any more. Tremel Nike. What have they done to Tremel Nike? They have deported him to the labor camps along the Canton River. It's impossible to get near him. Burke is unsparing in the number of soldiers he sent to guard his gold mines there. We'll have to liberate him so he can tell us what he knows of the whereabouts of Hatim. Yes, and we mustn't lose any more time, Yannis. In those labor camps, the prisoners die off entirely too easily. I'll go. But this time, it won't be through the service entrance. What is your plan? A shipwreck. Hirangu, get ready to leave with me tonight. But Sandokan... We'll discuss it later. Will you eat with us? I think that by now I should keep well away from the palace. Someone there might recognize me. How can I keep in contact with you? In the port you'll find the junk of Fuan. He's a fisherman who's faithful and eager to help us. Good. Why not let me go this time? Even though my race is different, I'm certain I can manage it. Harder. What's the matter? It's a desperate undertaking, Sandokan. I know you'll never accomplish it. 
You will be with your father soon. And you? What will become of you? <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Now go and get some rest. have arrived. You've been very quick. My compliments to the tailor. Thank you, Your Highness. All the other suits will be ready tomorrow. If you're feeling better now, Lord Burke would be very pleased if you would dine with him this evening. You may tell him I shall be honored to sit at his table. Good morning, Your Highness. How was your wound today? Ah, you struck hard, and so did you. <laughs> Dress me now. I had it constructed in the shipyards of Liverpool. Certainly there is no one except the English who know how to build a good yacht, and mine was superb. But the storm was more so that dashed us against the reefs of Madriga. If you'll permit me, I believe I can guess what you're thinking. If you'd like to try. You're thinking, who is this man, really, whom I've invited to sit at my table, whom I've clothed and entertained with such magnificence? Although you told me the Roger of Thamaputra. In fact, I did say that. But I noticed that a slight suspicion is in danger of ruining your dinner, which has been prepared with such perfection. Since you have brought up the subject yourself, I confess that you have correctly divined my thoughts. Yes, it's true. I admit I have a slight suspicion. Can you make it vanish? I'll try to, Lord Burke. Let's see now. I could be an imposter or a madman. And yet the shipwreck took place. And the wound is a real one. However, a wound is not hard to come by. But what could be the motive of this self-inflicted wound? Tell me yourself. Your interesting argument arouses my curiosity. Well, this I didn't receive from your tailors. It is a ruby of fabulous value. Examine it if you like. Even a person who is not an expert can see that this is so. Such purity I have never seen. But why do you show it to me? If I were an imposter, I would not offer you this jewel, which some people define as unique in the whole world. You offer it to me? With the greatest pleasure. I'm at a loss as to how to thank you. I've looked forward to knowing you for some time. I, too, have looked forward to our meeting, especially since I heard of the coup d'etat in Sarawak 
and the capture of Hassim. An ineffective sovereign. I had to interfere. You have the gratitude of all Malaya. Since we know you had no duty as an Englishman to take action. Hassim's rule was despotic. And the liberty of a people is something we all have a duty to protect. Stop wasting time there. Get to work. Of all the things that are to be seen in Sarawak, this is by far the most interesting. Mining gold from alluvial deposits. Do you extract much gold? It depends on the number of workmen. But luckily, the problem of manpower is one that doesn't worry us. So I see. I find it a good solution using prisoners to do the work. Ten hours of labor every day, in every sort of weather. It's the best form of correction I know. It makes them as gentle as lambs. It's amazing. <laughs> Stop that prisoner! Stop that gun! You dog of a million. You'll pay for this. Get a move on. Go ahead. But as you can see, they don't always become lambs. You again. Now you will pay for the other times as well. And you'll pay dearly. Try not to be punished. Did you hear what I said to the post? Be indulgent with him, Lord Byrne. I'm very sorry. But this man is one of the most rebellious of all. He has tried to escape several times before and has wounded two guards. Stand Move back! back. Stand back there. one bullet in the barrel. He will wait to fire it until the prisoner pleads for mercy. And if he misses? So much the better for the crocodile. Untie the man. My compliment. You are a magnificent marksman, Your Highness. I ask you to excuse this little exhibition of mine, but the temptation was too great. I'm curious to hear what the prisoner has to say after going through such a harrowing experience. Well, Malayan, how do you feel? Drink this tonight. Now pretend to faint. It's really too bad, Lord Burke. He's fainted. If you're still interested in knowing his sensations, you can question him tomorrow. <laughs> that is, if he's over his fright by then. Carry him away. Take him back to his cell.
heart could not bear up. A man who died of fright didn't deserve to live in the first place. Proceed. Lord Burke, I would like to ask you to have this man buried in a cemetery. We have here below us a cemetery that is so vast and deep. For the Malayans, to be dissolved in water means not only the death of the body, but of the soul. If it means so much to you, and it means saving a man's soul, he will be buried in a cemetery. Stop! Take the body away. You know what to do. And you? Tonight there's a ball in my honor. I must be there. Pomery, Reserve of 1870. Very difficult to find in Malaya. Tell me, Lord Burke, why are there so few Malayans among your guests? You know, with them it's difficult to create friendly relations. Why won't they collaborate? If it were only that, they refuse to establish any sort of contact with us. It's just as he says, Your Highness. If I had known that by coming here with my husband, I would have found myself in such a state of isolation, I would never have left Bombay. We're living in a completely hostile country. You shouldn't wonder at that. After all, your husband's landing here was rather noisy. It's a hostility that will last only a short time. Lieutenant Clintock will bring back with him something that will effectively cool off all the hotheads in this country. My lord... Will you excuse me, Your Highness? I will entrust you to my friends for a few minutes. By the way, Your Highness, how is it that your secretary is not here? <laughs> he detests receptions. They told him there's a tavern at the port where you eat well and which is very amusing.
Quickly, take the grave here. And you'd better keep awake. Your Highness. Excuse me, sir. Lord Burke requests that you join him at once in his study. Forgive me. I'll tell you the end of the story later. You sent for me, Lord Burke. Put him under arrest. Clintock. <laughs> Since I don't believe in ghosts, then I must assume that it is really you, though the worse for wear. Due to your actions, I admit I've had some rather ugly moments, but the hope of having the opportunity of meeting you once again was enough to keep me alive. And once again, we're face to face. May I ask you how you were saved? I was picked up by an Indian clipper. You've been most unfortunate. <laughs> the misfortune of one man depends upon the good fortune of another. There's something I can't understand. What could be your motive for denying your guests the spectacle of the capture of Sandokan, your mortal enemy? <laughs> Perhaps you would like to avoid admitting your ridiculous situation of having entertained a pirate. <laughs> Why have you come here to Sarawak? And it's quite certain you didn't come alone. Where are your companions hiding now? And where is the gold from the young India? You see, it's useless, Lord Burke. You will find that other means are needed to make him speak up. I wish you'd entrust him to me. I consider the swamp an effective means of persuasion. Tomorrow there will be no expert marksman standing by to save you, as you were when you saved that rebel today. Now I know what you came to Sarawak for. That rebel prisoner. First, you saved him from the crocodile. And then you prevented him from being thrown into the sea. Who is he? Stop! Throw down your weapons! Do as he says, Clintic. Stop digging the grave. Get busy with those shovels. We've got no time to waste. We better not wait any longer. Shoot only if it's absolutely necessary, and be careful not to hit the diggers. Did you hear that? Someone was whistling down there. Certainly, you idiot. Didn't you know that ghosts always whistle like that during the night? Bring the coffin here. Hurry up, you dogs. Get moving. Stop him where he is. Oh! Take oh! cover! out as carefully as you can and be sure not to damage the coffin. I want to put that sergeant inside it. 
Keep still. Sandokan. We have to fall back into the jungle. What's the matter? We've been discovered. Hurry. Pirangu, Harondo, take Tremel Knight with you. Quickly, quickly. We ought to go after them. We never find them at night in the jungle. We'll make that man tell us where they are. Throw the rebel cur into the grave. Where's the pirate's hideout? Where can we find the others? We were supposed to bury a man alive here tonight. I see that we're still in time to do so. No. No. Shoot me if I have to die. But don't bury me alive, I beg you. Just a moment. Tell me where they've gone. To the pagoda. The pagoda of Quat. Lieutenant. Why waste a bullet when there's no need? No! 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 They should have arrived by this time. What could have happened? You mustn't worry, mistress. They'll get here safely. Here they are. Did everything go all right for you? We lost Fushan and Erdok. We must look after him now. Take him inside and bring me some Arak. We finally made it here. He's a lucky man, Princess Hada. I haven't slept a wink for two nights. You decided to come down to hell, too? No, they sent you back to us. I've never seen a dead man any deader than you were. Tell me, have you really discovered where they have Hashim imprisoned? The refuge of the Falcon. Yes. Yes, I have. Burke has imprisoned the Maharaja in a monastery on the top of Mount Fabarum. For two weeks, I had to follow a monk through the jungle. Tell me more about this monastery. How many soldiers are there? At most, about fifty. But this is not the only difficulty we have. Burke has chosen well. The monastery has no road leading to it. It's built on the edge of a sheer cliff wall. Maybe we'd be able to reach it by using a gas balloon. Homat, do you know the Faber Room? Yes, Tiger. It's an impregnable mountain peak. We'll need ten men who are all familiar with the neighborhood. That will take me some time. You'll have it. Samuel Young, you go with him. You'll choose the best men you can find. There'll be a full moon ten nights from now. We'll wait for you at the foot of the mountain. Dremel Knight will guide us there. You can count on me. Let's get started. The best of luck to you.
Disarm all of them. What are you doing in this place with them? You are a white man. No one but a renegade would associate himself with these ugly faces. They say that dawn is the best time of day for a man to die. You will be shot by a firing squad immediately, all of you. Take them outside. No, wait. You have no authority to kill them, and I forbid it. Your Highness, I'm delighted to see you again. Sir John. Who is this woman? I have the great pleasure of presenting to you the Pearl of the House of Hassim, Hada. The daughter of the ex-Maharaja. Lieutenant, are you quite sure of what you're saying? She was traveling incognito with her servant on the Young India. And now she's here in company with Sando Khan. What better proof do you need? Let her alone, Clintock. Don't torment her. You've done her enough harm. Take them all outside and proceed with the execution. No. Not you. I have something of extreme importance to say to you, Your Highness. Oh! Against the wall. Go and tell Lord Burke that we're ready. Your father will listen to what you say and place his trust in you. He will also speak to him in the name of Sandakan. No, I can't do it. You forget that I am a princess and my duty to my country must come first. Then I see you prefer to listen to the voice of duty rather than your own heart. It's most admirable, but not practical. You are a miserable blackguard, Burke. You break every law of humanity. But one day you will learn that there are sentiments and ideals that you will never be able to destroy with cruelty and execution. My lord, the firing squad is waiting for your orders. It's the last opportunity you will get. The lives of your friends are in your hands alone. A few seconds now and you will hear the sound of shots being fired. Then it will be too late for you to save their lives. And you'll be left with nothing except remorse for the rest of your life. Make up your mind. I'm not asking you to do anything that's infamous. It's for the welfare of Sarawak and of its people. Who will guarantee that you'll keep the promise you've made me? I have given you my word. That is sufficient. Anyway, you have no other choice left. One of you is offered the privilege of having his eyes bandaged. Only one, however. Bandage my eyes, Lieutenant. The renegade is more afraid to die than these savages here? I'm not afraid, Lieutenant. It's so that the last thing I see while I'm alive will not be your clean, scrubbed white face. Lord Burke, I request that you allow me to give the order to fire. There will be no executions. Perhaps one of these days, when you're laboring in the mines of Taipan, you will all regret this act of clemency with which I am saving your lives.
Falls, we'll make a stop here. My kingdom for a cigarette. What kingdom? Huh. We're getting special treatment today. For a whole day, you won't get anything else. We're going to pass through the swamps. Take it. Eat it now. But why? The trail goes around the edge of the swamp, right at the arms of the Dyaks, who are making a collection of human heads. The idea of marching through those swamps for a whole day up to my knees in mud and water has taken away my appetite. And for me, the desire for a cigarette. Hard to stay. Get back there. It's been two days since we've had a drop of water. From now on, you'll only drink at night. <laughs> what are you lagging here for? Get a move on. Forward. I trust you have arranged a pleasant sojourn for our friends under your care. According to your orders, my lord, I assure you without hesitation that you may cancel from the list of your enemies Sando Khan and all his cutthroats. In the minds of Taipan, it is almost impossible that even the strongest man can hold out for more than a month. And in this particular case, I have cut to half their daily ration of water. An excellent idea. People who have a thirst for liberty are cured only with a salt diet. Get to work there, I said. Get to work there, you sons of cattle. Put your backs at it. Move on. Didn't you hear me? What are you doing over there? Get to work. Fuck, fall down. Clumsy imbecile, ask for mercy from the true son of the Celestial Empire, Choban. Jump out, throw salt in his eyes. <laughs> if you don't want to have your head broken, you'll give me a ration of water tonight. I'm beginning to believe that if anyone survives this infernal place, it'll be a son of the Celestial Empire. All right, keep at it. Three more days left now. If we expect to arrive at the trouble room at the time established. I know. We've got to find a way to escape. But we'll never be able to do it alone. How about the convicts? We'd certainly have them on our side. It's not so simple. First, I've got to get the better of Chopin. All the convicts respect him as their leader. Hey, you down there! Quiet, you're here. If you don't want to sleep, let the others get some rest. Get up, Chopin. I know a good way to put you to sleep. Right now. You must have gone crazy. I'll break you in two. Oh, 
the strongest, isn't that enough? That's not what I want. Then what is it you do want? Tomorrow, we're going to escape with the help of you and the others. Very well. You can count on my help.
through there. Why do you want to plow through the mire when there's a trail that goes around it? The Dyaks are there. And you ought to know that. Yes, and what's more, I know that all I need to keep a pack of savages at a safe distance is a good gun. Who's coming with me? It's nothing but stupidity to leave a good trail to go in there among those crocodiles in the swamp. Let's go. Chopin, listen to me. Even if you're well armed, you'll never be able to get through the jungle. They're coming with me, I tell you. Didn't you see? I'm their chief and nobody else. Let him go. We can't afford to risk it. Sandokan hasn't come yet. There's nothing to do but attack. The rope bridge over the gorge has been cut. And to scale that sheer wall... No, it would only be suicide. Take my advice and let's wait for Sandokan. We've been waiting here 18 hours for him. I don't believe he's coming. Sandokan is coming. Sandokan, you finally made it. Water. All the water you've got. 
And cigarettes for you. Oh, no, my friend. This time it's water I want. If that's the case, it really must have been bad. Thank you. Are you ready? Yes. But I have to confess that I doubted if we'd ever see you again. I had some doubts, too, about getting out of that mine alive. With a little persuasion, we made that soldier talk. We learned that reinforcements have got to the monastery. And with them are Burke, Clintock, and a young woman who was heavily veiled. Perhaps that would be Hada. Another reason to get to the Faber room. tell you, we'd all have to be eagles to get up there to the monastery. The platform is the only way up. They lower it twice every day, once in the morning and again at night. In a little while, it should come down. I'm sure we can get there. Simply make use of the platform. But how can we? You'll see tonight. It's coming down. mistress up there and I want to save her. The weight of one person might deceive them, but not of two.
What's the use of straining over that thing? Nobody here will be going down tonight. Yes, you're right. Kunal is standing guard below in the valley. Let's gamble for a few rupees. Going in now. go up with the platform any longer. In what condition is the bridge over the gorge? There's no way of repairing it. Doesn't matter. We'll find a way to get across anyway. Let's go. We've got to be at the monastery before dawn. Don't be insistent. As long as I am held here as a prisoner, Burke will be considered only a usurper of power. It's impossible to construct anything upon blood and oppression. The English colonial government, if it only knew the crimes he has committed in our country, would remove him at once. You're quite mistaken, I assure you, Prince. Things have changed since you were there. Ask your daughter if this isn't so. Yes, it is true. The people of Sarawak have become accustomed to a new regime. They've returned to their work as usual. They remember you always with affection, but after what they've been through, they only desire to live in peace. I cannot tell what it is that drives you to say these things, but I somehow have the idea that you're not being sincere. You are wrong. No one is forcing her. She has only realized, as have the others, that Sarawak has no longer any need of you. Why is it, then, that you're so eager for me to sign an act of abdication if all is going so well? Your abdication would save the lives of a great many people and would be a means of preventing reprisals. It's clear that you're simply repeating a lesson that these men have taught you. What is it that threatens you? Nothing. Let me have one more night to reflect upon this. Very well, then. You will please have the courtesy to come with me. Not you, Lieutenant. I would like for you to remain here as company for our noble guest. It's a night of very special importance, you know. If you are concerned that I might attempt to take my own life, you are more foolish than I thought you to be. <laughs> they say the Oriental soul is difficult to understand. Therefore, I take what precautions are needed. I'll give you some good advice. When you've become calmer, go back to him and make an effort to be more convincing. One order from me to the minds of Typhon and your friends will be dead. Now return to your own apartment and meditate carefully on what I've said. This is the last opportunity I offer you. The Princess Hada may come and go freely to visit her father. I felt sure that I would find you here. 
We managed to escape. Listen to me. We've no time to lose. Where's the Rogers' apartment? It's on the same corridor on the opposite side, though, but there are two soldiers standing guard at the door. And there's Clintock, ready to kill him at the slightest move. Yes, there is a way, though. I'll go back in there, but this time I'll be well armed. Let me have your pistol. No, Hala. Es demasiado peligroso. Clintock es muy astuto. No puedes arriesgarte. No tenemos elección si queremos salvar a mi padre. Está bien. Pasaré por la cornisa. Me bastan cinco minutos. Podrás hacerlo. Confía en mí. We're getting close now. Quick. We're going to have to move fast. We've got to get to the monastery or die trying. We've let our pride dominate us for too long, Father. It's time to stop it. That's all over. I don't understand you. You say, you say things to me that have no sense to them. Father, I want you to listen. I've come back here to speak to you of the good that will come to Sarawak if you will only agree to abdicate. Oh. Try to understand, Father. As a ruler, you're finished. The people prefer Burke, a Raja strong and youthful. One who can bring back order to the country and legal stability. Don't move, Lieutenant Clintock. And don't try to reach for your pistol. Father, don't do anything rash. We'll never get out of here alive. Your father's right. Don't do anything you'll regret. Open the window. Hurry! Sandakan. Your Highness, I've come to liberate you. Stay back from me. Go on. Ah! 
Come out from there. You have no way to escape now. I'll give you one minute to give yourselves up. Throw down your weapons and your lives will be spared. You mustn't think of me now. You and my daughter have a duty to save yourselves. They'll get here. It'll take more than a mountain or a broken bridge to stop them. Come out, I tell you! Hold on tight, Artie! once more a free country. Thank you. Thank you, my good friend. Thunder God! Thunder God! 